Welcome back to Person on Sunday. I'm now joined by UK's, I think it's fifth leader since 2016, Gerard Batten. Um, good to see you this morning. Uh, Hello, your predecessor, Nigel Farage, struggled for years to persuade British voters mm -hmm. that you were more than a single issue party. Last week, your big interview was with one of the founders of the English Defence League, Tommy Robinson. And obviously, the entire interview was about your concerns about immigration in this country of, of Muslims. You are turning UKIP back um, into a sort of anti-Islam single-issue party, well, did aren't you, you? Did you watch the whole interview? Because mm -hmm. Tommy asked me how I got involved in politics and um, I explained to him uh, how that happened and that UKIP had always had a full range of policies right from the start. We were mm. never a single-issue party. Uh, we've always had a manifesto right from the start. Um, and we do have, uh, we are developing a new manifesto now as we go forward. He was asking me about particular issues which are relevant to, to him. That was how the interview was slanted. But, uh, is, course, but it is one of your I, also personal obsessions, isn't no, it? No, it's that... not an obsession to be concerned about something. I mean, concerned about lots of things. Mm. And if you ask me questions about something, I can hopefully give you some answers on a particular subject. But that was his... And I have been interviewed by a lot of people over the years... Sure. Uh, ..from all of the main uh, media outlets. So uh, he is now a journalist and he interviewed me in his uh, I, capacity as a journalist. I mean, one of the things that struck me was your statement that it's now worse, you said, these are your words, to be called a racist than to mm. be called a murderer, a murderer or a paedophile. Well, what I, did think, you mean by uh, that? I think it now has become a crime whereby uh, it's like witchcraft in the 16th century. You are guilty until you can prove your innocence. Uh, and I think that's a very dangerous thing where this word is bandied about. Very, there's no definition of what it means, by the way. It's used to accuse people of things which are fairly indistinct. Um, and it is becoming a crime whereby it is the worst thing you can be accused of. Probably I was exaggerating a little bit, but I was trying to make a point. But it but... sounds as though... I mean, look, you have said, for example, you've described Islam as a death cult, you've said you'd want to screen immigrants to make sure that mm. they're not extreme in their views uh, when it comes to their Muslim faith. It sounds, though, when you say that it's worse to be called a racist than to be called a murderer, that there are other things you want to say, but you can't. Uh, not at all. What I'm making the point again is that we've now reached this position where you can be accused of something where you're more or less guilty until you're proved innocent. Uh, and we had... I was interested in... Sadiq Khan was talking a lot about racism mm. earlier on, and then he made the point at the end of the interview that he wants to see a preferential scheme mm. for EU citizens over other migrants. Well, most of the people that live in the EU are probably white, majority of them. So isn't that racist to say you'd have an immigration system where you prefer people from the, uh, from the European Union rather than have a fair system? So you'd be opposed to that? Absolutely. I want a fair system for anybody in the world who wants to come, but a very strict... you want any immigration into this country? Uh, yes, some immigration. We've had mass uncontrolled... What sort of numbers? Well, do, you, uh, do you approve of the, the Prime Minister's uh, target, which everybody says is unrealistic, of 100,000 Right, I think that's too much, my own personal view. What, what if should you, it be? Well, it's very difficult to talk about exact numbers. First of all, you have to break immigration down into people who are coming on work permits. Mm. Now, in most countries in the world, if you have a two- or three-year work, per work permit, you're required to leave at the end of that work permit. You have seasonal workers, for example, on farms, mm. who come in for six months or three months or whatever, and we've always had that system in the past. And then you have immigration for permanent settlement, where people are actually coming in to marry somebody or they're applying for citizenship in due course. Now, if you go back to the 70s, we had an immigration of about 30,000 a year, and you will famously remember that Mrs Thatcher famously said we'll be in swamped. Well, that isn't even, even a week's amount of immigration that we're getting now. Um, and I think that probably immigration for permanent settlement, not counting people who are coming in on a temporary basis, is probably between about 30 and 50, would be now, a reasonable amount. Now, on the narrower issue of dealing with what you think is, and most many people would disagree with you, the problem with particularly Muslim immigration, you've said it depends on, and I don't see why, mm. Brexit. Why does it depend on Brexit? I said it depends on Brexit. Yeah, you did. In you said context? it in the Tommy Robinson interview. You said... Well, we can't control immigration policy if we don't properly leave the European Union. I mean, you can't have a policy on anything unless you leave the European Union because ultimately it's decided by the European Union. So unless we have a completely clean break from the EU, then you won't actually be able to have a meaningful policy on very much at all. Now, th there is a huge debate about alleged anti-Semitism mm. in the Labour Party. 
Some would say that some of the remarks that you make about Muslims are very similar to the sort of things that, for well, example, the Nazis said about Jews in the Actually, 30s. you want to look at what I've said, because I okay. always talk about the ideology of the Islamic religion. I don't talk about individuals. I don't talk about people, because I take people uh, as I meet them. Right. You know, I, I accept people as they are. What concerns me is ideologies and whether they are appropriate in this country or not. It's the ideology that's the problem. And the reason that you have anti the reason you've got this degree of anti-Semitism in the Labour Party, in my view, mm. is because it very much depends upon uh, Muslim voters in inner cities. And the Islamic religion is inherently anti-Semitic, and therefore they are pandering to a certain okay, section I'd, I'd, of I'd love to challenge you on that. Unfortunately, I've, that's all we've got time for.